Well, I have to say visualization has been important to me virtually all my life. As a child, uh, I was a sketch artist and a model maker. And then in my design career, of course, uh, sketching, drawing, making models and prototypes and visualizing your designs is absolutely essential to success. Visualizing ideas is the way to go. Talking about ideas doesn't work very well. You must visualize. Is this the right place? Someone asked me to speak here today. Okay. I have to say a few things first before I get started. You know, I really hate it when Ben presents like that. It's just so hard to compete with. And you know, he jumps off the stage and he jumps back on the stage and he marches around. Do you know what would happen if I did that? I'd be in the hospital. I would fall one jump off the stage. I would be flat on my face and I'd be in the hospital. So Ben, a suggestion, please put together a workshop for senior citizens, or, or we're going to really hurt ourselves if we do it like you. OK. Caution. This presentation may be dangerous to your career, or at least to the career you have right now. I've wondered many times if this wasn't actually true that the real purpose of my life was to be a warning to others. Hopefully today it will be maybe a warning to you, but also an encouragement that if you feel different or strange, like I have, and maybe uh, something's wrong with the way you're going, hopefully what I tell you today uh, will be an inspiration to you. Well, maybe you can find me in this picture. Is it possible? It may be hard to find me. Uh, what's wrong with this picture? As you can see, for most of my life, um, I've been a bit different, and I was defi definitely different when I was in Korea for the first time. So this presentation is a little bit about my being different, and sometimes in the wrong place, but at the right time, and possibly encouraging you. So if you feel sometimes that there's something wrong with your picture, I hope to tell you a few little stories today about things that happened to me on my way to becoming a designer through being a chemical engineer and now back in Korea uh, having the best job I've ever had in my life. So this is where it all started. When I was a child, uh, I drew all the time. And I made models, and that is something that is pretty natural for designers when they're children. However, for many years, even until I was an adult, I didn't know that there was such a thing as industrial design or product design, or that you could actually make a living doing those kinds of things. But also, I'm sure that my parents are looking down from heaven right now saying, what's wrong with this picture? He was such a nice boy. Anyway, something may have gone wrong here, but I'm sure having a lot of fun. Now, as I said, when I was a child, I drew a lot. In fact, I drew so much, I had a callus on the second finger of my right hand, a big callus from using a pencil so much. And I made a lot of models, car models, and I also built a model railroad all by myself. Now, this was when... I was a child and I was fascinated with visualization, sketching, drawing, making models. So back in those days, they had many ads like this in newspapers and magazines and they were the so-called draw me contest. These are real. I don't know if they have them anymore. But if you would faithfully copy the image uh, on the ad, and nearly perfectly, and if you would send in your drawing to this company, you had a chance of winning a free art course in New York. So, I copied the drawing one time, and I sent it in, and I won. Well, the 
art school salesman came out to my house with my parents. And though we found out that I had won a scholarship for the course, there was a lot more money to be spent on travel and housing and materials and other things. And so my parents and I decided that maybe being an artist wasn't the right path. In fact, Sputnik, the first satellite, had just been launched and most Americans were worried that the Russians were coming. And so we should prepare for that. And so that meant young people should primarily be studying science and engineering. So that's what I did. So during high school, I studied biology and chemistry and physics and science and math. And then I went on to undergraduate school in chemical engineering. And I must say, I'm not sure, I look back and I'm not sure why I did that, because it was one of those strange decisions of my life that affected many things. So one of the first times that I had one of these what's wrong with this picture uh, feelings was I was in a graduate chemical engineering class as a senior uh, in undergraduate chem -E school. And the professor was writing all of these really complicated chemical and mathematical formulas on the blackboard. And I was watching this happen and I was thinking, this is just ludicrous, this is ridiculous, what am I doing here? And I spontaneously laughed out loud. Ha <laughs> ha! That was not a good thing. The professor said, he didn't, he didn't turn around, he looked straight at the blackboard and he says, what's the problem, Dressel House? And I said, oh, oh, nothing, 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 no problem, no problem. But I knew inside that there was a problem. Something's wrong with this picture. What am I doing here? So here's a Chinese proverb that I had, you are not smart enough. We had a Chinese professor at our uh, chemical engineering school, and he was really smart. Everyone knew he was very smart but <clears throat> almost no one could understand his lectures because of his accent. But I never had a class from him. One day he called me into his office and he sat me down and he said, Bill, you should not apply to graduate school in chemical engineering. You are not smart enough. You need to just go out and get a job. Well, Here's Forrest Gump's statement, stupid is as stupid does, and I wondered, oh my goodness, how did he know that I was so stupid? Is it showing? Are people talking? How did he know? Well, actually, it was too late, because I had already applied to three graduate schools for chemical engineering master's degree, and all three of them awarded me a full fellowship. So what a trick that was. Maybe in the first time in history, these graduate schools had awarded a stupid person a graduate fellowship. Well, anyway, I went to one of the schools and uh, was supposed to study chemical engineering, but little did they know that I was not there to actually study chemical engineering. Actually, I studied sleeping because that's what I did most of the time. I was so bored to death with my chemical engineering classes and my master's research that I slept most of the time. And actually, the real reason for me going to graduate school in chemical engineering at this school was to meet my lovely wife, Becky, which is where we met. So after graduating in chemical engineering with a master's degree, one of the most common places to go to get a job and work in a refinery was a place like Pascagoula, Mississippi. Now, for any of you out there from Pascagoula, my apologies, but that was not an exciting idea. It is not an exciting place to go and work and live. And so I was terrified of getting a job like that. So now I, keep, I still tell my wife that the reason I married her is because she was from Los Angeles. That's where I wanted to go. And so we moved there and I got a job with a chemical engineering design company designing chemical plants. Well, I'm sure that most of you don't know what a downcomer is. Well, a downcomer 
is a welded up assembly of metal plates inside of a, a distillation column that, well, it permits the liquid to, guess what, come down. We didn't have very complicated names for things then. The liquid comes down and we call it a downcomer. And so uh, that's probably the most complicated thing that chemical engineers would deal with in a mechanical sense. Mostly we were looking at uh, complex processes and formulas. Well, talking about visualization uh, in this, in this uh, event here, uh, one of the next something's wrong with this picture events that I had in my life was I was at this chemical process design company and I was in my cubicle and next door I overheard two senior chemical engineers talking about the design and shape of a downcomer. And they were arguing about the design and they were only using words. And I thought, wow, I can visualize. So I pulled my drawer open and I pulled out some manila folders for cardboard and I got some scissors and tape and I sat there and really quickly I made a mock-up and a model of this uh, downcomer design. I could visualize. So I got all this together and like a child that just got some candy, I ran around the corner and I said, hey guys, look at this. Is this what you're talking about? And they said, oh. Yeah, okay, and they walked off. And I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, I, let's work on this design. I'd like to, maybe we can make it better, we can change this here. They weren't interested. Something was wrong with that picture. I was more interested in the design and the creating the mock-up and the model than they were, and I wasn't interested in chemical engineering. So, what to do? I was finally getting the picture that something was seriously wrong with my career path. So first, I went back to a, a, a junior college in downtown Los Angeles called Los Angeles Trade Tech, and I learned how to be a machinist at night. And then I enrolled at Cal State Long Beach uh, in industrial arts, and I started taking more machine shop and wood shop and learning how to make more things. But something still wasn't quite right with doing that. Well, one day, I accidentally walked up to the art department and walked through the design school. And on the walls and on the display tables, I saw sketches and drawings and designs and mock-ups and models. And I nearly pass out. I thought, this is it. This really exists. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I was drawing again and designing, and I was passionate about this new area that I'd found for a new career. The only problem is I couldn't afford another four years for another bachelor's degree at Cal State. I had to do something different, even though I love doing this. So. The wonderful professors at Cal State Long Beach helped me get into Stanford University in their design division, and, their, and I got a master's degree in product design from Stanford. And interestingly enough, when I went up there for my first interview to apply for graduate school, they were very interested in me, not because I was smart, but because I was strange. There aren't too many people who are chemical engineers who want to be artists and designers, and they like that. So they told me, we will tr twist your head on backwards here. And if you ask my wife, she will tell you that, yes, it's still twisted on backwards. Anyway, finally I was finishing up my master's product design degree at Stanford, and I was in the uh, Stanford model shop. And here comes Mrs. Kim, who was at the time the president of Induct Institute of Design. And she was looking for a visiting professor to come to her school. So she found me, and uh, we had an interview and a discussion. And when we were done talking, she said, you are coming. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. I can't do that. I have to make that fast decision. I have to talk to my wife and see what she thinks. So I went home, and I told my wife about this interview that we might go to Korea and, and work. 
And little did I remember that my wife's father was a missionary to Korea prior to that. And so my wife was already interested in Korea. And she said, we are going. Well, so I had two females who were driving my life here. And that was very, very difficult to resist. So I went to Korea. I also remember that moment when I looked into my wife's eyes, and it wasn't really about my job in Korea. It was very clear she had babies in her eyes because she knew about Holt Children's Services and ha was intent upon adopting our first child in Korea when we got there. So that's what happened. We adopted our first son while we were in Korea. And uh, this is one picture that has no problems. And he's now 35 years old. And actually, I have three children, and two of them are Korean. And the interesting thing about having a 35-year-old Korean son is that often I will talk to young people in Korea about various things. And I will say, well, back in 1962, I did this, or 1974, or whatever. And they often go, I was just a baby then, or I wasn't even born then. So anyway, it's nice being older than ev everybody sometimes, except when you're jumping around like, like Ben. So eventually, I came back to Silicon Valley, and I got a job as a product designer with a small industrial design firm in Mountain View, California. And it was owned by a famous designer who had made his uh, award-winning designs at Hewlett Packard and then started his own company. And his chief, I worked for his chief designer, a guy by the name of Fred. And I must tell you that that was absolutely design boot camp. It was one year of hell. At the time, I thought Fred was mean, nasty, unkind, uh, cruel, tough. It was, it was just unbelievable. He didn't like anything I did. He made me redo everything, and he pushed me to do everything in the, in the design process. But I have to say that that was one of the best experiences in my life, and it changed my career. Fred knew how to do everything. He also had a side business of auto mechanic repair. So he knew how to do everything. He knew how to deal with clients. He knew how to write proposals. He knew how to do mechanical design. He knew how to do industrial design, product design. He knew how to manage. And he made me do every bit of it. And in fact, in one year's time working for Fred, I did 10 to 12 entire projects, both styling and mechanical design and working with the clients. In one year, I had 10 to 12 projects under my belt. So Fred, if you're out there, thank you. You did me a great favor. You changed my life. Every job I had after I left that company under Fred, except for one, I became a manager within a few months in a short time. So I ended up working at HP for a while and then at Apple. And sometimes the year from hell can turn into something heaven sent. Because at that small design office working for Fred, I met the guy who would hire me eventually at Apple. And I met the design engineer who was to become my chief designer and chief engineer at Apple when I hired him there. So I ended up getting hired at Apple. And I worked briefly for a time for Steve Jobs, a short time. And I ended up being the principal designer and the design manager for the division, product design manager, for actually what became the forerunner of the Apple Macintosh, which was this Lisa computer. Even though it was considered a failure in the marketplace, it actually was a tremendous success because the Macintosh was based upon everything we had done for, uh, for at least five years in developing the software, hardware, and product design of the Lisa. So I can say the rest of the story, which is a whole other story, was about 20 years of working then in Silicon Valley with startups, with companies like IDEO and Frog Design and Lunar Design, companies like Sun Microsystems. After I left Apple, 
I was a consultant to Apple on many products uh, and systems for about 10 years. And so uh, that's just another story of designing a lot of products, both from the inside and the outside. Eventually, I moved my family to Portland, Oregon to get out in the country. And uh, for a time, I was a design manager at InFocus Systems, where I led the design of three of the world's first compact digital projectors that were number one in the marketplace. So now, I am back in Korea. And what started that was I wrote a book in 2000 called ROI, Return on Innovation. And uh, that was translated into Korean, into ROI, Design Innovation 1.0. Maybe you can see that book. And that started making me contacts again in Korea for more activities in this country. So now what I do relative to this visualizing event we have today, I spend most of my time visualizing ideas, concepts, product, process, and teaching materials for my students. I have now come full circle, Korea to Korea, and now having started out in something that there was really something wrong with that picture, I now have what I think is the best job I've ever had in my life, and that's teaching young Korean students like this everything I know about design. Thank you. So now, I would like to introduce your next speaker. This person is a passionate Apple user, an intense keynote developer. He is the founder of the keynote user group in Seoul, Korea. He is the co-founder and co-organizer of this wonderful TED event, TEDx event here today. And he's also a great guy.